Good morning folks, um, this is Lee, your Virtual Airline Pilots, back with you for another review, the second one this week. Uh, we're back in Europe again, and today we're in Kosovo, which used to be for part of the former Yugoslavia. Um, and this is Pristina International Airport, Adem Yashari International Airport, Bravo Kilo Papa Romeo. It's a payware scenery by M&M Simulations, and this is version 1.1 for the PC version of flights in 2020. Again, no mention as to whether it's available for Xbox. Um, possibly that may come. The download is 1.7 gig, so it's fairly hefty, and it installs at 4.5 gig, 4.25 gig. Um, I can say right off the bat, it's a fairly extensive project. The terminal was beautifully modelled inside and out. Um, there are people figures. Um, they've also included the um, extension to the runway. The runway is now 3,050 metres. Um, and the extension to the military area over here, which actually isn't shown on the current Jefferson charts. So that's a real, uh, that's a, a plus. Um, and there are works going on which have just sort of were completed in December 2021, uh, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, this project is available from both Orbix and SimMarket. It's slightly cheaper from Orbix, and I'll give you their prices. Um, from Orbix, then, it's €21.18, Euros and 18 cents, which equates to roughly $20.63, or £18.61 UK. Please note that all of those prices are estimates when converted from Australian dollars, and they include VAT and tax which again may vary slightly depending on which country you're when you make your purchase. So as I said, available from Orbix and Sim Market, slightly cheaper for Orbix, not an awful lot in it to be on to be honest. So here's the list of features. Accurately modeled terminal and interior, custom night lighting, custom parking positions matching the real life airport, custom surroundings, custom people and animated objects, PBR materials, updated CGL data. Now I'm not sure exactly what that is, um, but I've seen CGL files as part of almost every scenery download um, I've ever had, so I know that's important. And real world based terraforming profile, as you can see, um, it's another very, very nice area in terms of the way it looks on the land. And um, it's been beautifully modeled to fit in with the surrounding terrain. So they've done a nice job with that, and that's really quite impressive. have to say, um, it's beautifully modelled all over the place. There's lots to see here, both military and civilian. Um, looks, It just looks great. It's a very, very nice airport. So as ever, let's start with some history, and let's discuss um, that this airport has quite a bit of history, obviously being in the former Yugoslavia during the problems in that country. So let's have a look at the, the some of the history of this airport. So, Pristina Adem Yashari International Airport, Bravo Kilo Papa Romeo, is a public military airport located in the city of Pristina in the Republic of Kosovo, formerly part of Serbia, from which it was declared independence in 2008. The airport is 9.3 miles or 15 kilometers southwest of the city of Pristina and is owned and operated by Limak Kosovo International Airport JSC. I'll put that up for you. The airport has flights to numerous European destinations and is a focus city for Eurowings and Air Mediterranean. The airport is the only port of entry for air travellers to the Republic of Kosovo. And it's named in honour of one Adam Yashari, the founder of Kosovo Liberation Army. Pristina International Airport serves as an operating base for Eurowings from Germany and formerly Adria Airways from Slovenia. So the airport was originally built as Slatin Air Base, containing the second largest military underground hangar complex in the former Yugoslavia. For two weeks in June 1999, there was a brief but tense standoff between NATO and the Russian Kosovo force, during which Russian troops occupied the airport. A contingent of 200 Russian troops deployed in Bosnia and Herzegovina, then crossed into Kosovo and occupied the airport in the capital, Pristina. The apron and the passenger terminal were renovated and expanded in 2002 and again in 2009. In June 2006, Pristina International Airport was awarded the Best Airport 2006 Award by the Airports Council International. 
On the 12th of November 2008, Pristina International Airport received for the first time in its history its one millionth passenger, excluding military. A special ceremony was held at the airport where the passenger received a free return ticket to a destination of his or her choice served by the airport. In late 2010, the airport was re renamed from Pristina International Airport to Pristina Airport Adam Yashari, the founder of the Kosovo Liberation Army. Due to the ongoing dispute between Serbia and Kosovo, flights to and from Pristina Airport are impacted by the refusal of air traffic control in Serbia to allow overflights via Serbian airspace. This ultimately results in flight paths avoiding Serbian territory, with flights to Pristina having to enter via Albanian or Macedonian airspace. This dispute can generally add up to 30 minutes to a flight duration, and discussions to overcome the dispute have so far failed. Being the only international airport in the immediate region, any diversions would ultimately have to go to either North Macedonia, Albania or Bulgaria, given that Gojava Airport is still a closed facility. Currently, over 19 airlines operate into Pristina, including British Airways, Turkish Airlines, Egypt Air, EasyJet, LOT, Polish Airlines and Wizz Air. In 2021, the airport handled 2.1 million passengers and over 18,000 aircraft movements. In December 2021, the runway extension that was often talked about, including the instrument landing system upgrade, was completed. We also had the addition of the expanded military area. As of September 2022, there are ongoing construction works on the taxiways and at each end of the runway. And as you can see, all of this has been faithfully modelled. Here's the original runway length here. Here's the extension um, and the addition and upgrade here to the military area and aprons N and L. So this has all been included in the new scenery, which really brings it up to date. And both of these runways have full instrument landing capability, with runway 17 being category 3B certified, and we'll discuss more about that next. So that does it about does it for sort of history. Um, as you can see, this beautiful area and lovely airport that's lo really beautifully modelled has really been through the ringer somewhat and um, survives today and um, does pretty well considering. So let's have a look at runways. Okay, runways. So we've lowered the lighting to just before 5 p.m. local time. Um, it's mid-October 2022. And as you can see, it's a beautiful surroundings here. And you can see some of the lighting around the airport as well, which is really delicately done. Anyway, let's talk runways. Pristina Airport operates a single runway, 1735, measuring 9,974 feet or 3,050 meters in length. And it's made from asphalt. The airport lies at an elevation of 1,793 feet or 547 meters. At both ends of the runway feature an instrument landing system and they also have RNP and VOR approach options too. Runway 17 features an instrument landing system certified for Category 3B low visibility operations as well as high intensity airfield lighting system version 2 and precision approach path indicators single one on the left side. So there you can see everything as it should be including the extended zone. You've got touchdown zone lighting as well and the center line lighting included as well as the runway end identifier lights. So although a lot of this is not shown on the charts it's been added in the sim which is going to help you enormously in landings. And you're certified for Category 3B, which is basically zero visibility auto land conditions. So that's runway 17. Let's just go and have a look at runway 15, uh, 35. So runway 35, and we're looking down the float of that runway now, features a standard instrument landing system, as well as high intensity airport lighting system and precision approach path indicator, again on the left side of the runway. So there you can see it, we've also got the touchdown zone lighting, centerline lighting, runway end identifier lights and the shortened version of the approach light system. So these both runways are really well equipped, you can land at both ends, they both have various options. Um, the category 3V low visibility option is the other end there, runway 17. So the other thing I like about this, and you can see this during the darkness here, they've got the um, airport fence line and actually this surrounds the whole airport, the whole thing has been done and modelled. 
and from this view of course you can see something of the evening lighting. This is a, a lovely airport, great model and I can't wait to tell you to get down and have a close look and show you what it looks like. Anyway that does it for runways and navigation aids. Let's now do the jetway test and have a look and see how that goes. So jetways, here we are parked on stand 202 at Pristina. Um, and we're here to test the jetways. They look exceedingly long, even those that are retracted. Anyway, as you can see, I've moved the tug into the tow position so everything is clear. Let's check the jetway and see how she matches up. I have to say that jetway interior looks quite good. So interesting how the model is coming down towards the ground level. So that's not bad at all, I mean it's penetrated the skin but only slightly. And the other thing I've noticed, these stairwells that you see on many jet wells or jetways often drag into the concrete. This one hasn't, which is a really good thing. Let's have a look at a closer look at this. And as you can see, that's pretty good. That's good that's as good as any I've seen really. Let's have a look from the other side. Yep, that's pretty good. There's a slight gap at the top there, but uh, I think that's really pretty good, really considering. So let's detach her. So that's pretty excellent, the um, thing is detached quite nicely and it's actually gone quite a way away from the aircraft, right back into the safe zone. As you can see it's quite a long jetway, it's um, thoroughly marked and looks well used which is good. You can see the power cable underneath here as well. And there you can see inside the jetway here's the approaching door and this is quite nice. The uh, um, the ramp part at the very end is pretty much exactly what you see in almost every jetway certainly that I've ever walked down. And finally there's a view of the other side of the jetway with the um, advertising on it. And uh, again look, just beautiful weathering here that makes this thing look as though it's been around and been in use for a while. Very very nice. So that about does it for jetways. As you can see, the jetway works. It's nicely modelled. Let's start the grand tour of the airport. We're starting at the um, runway 35 end. And I just wanted to show you this VOR station. Beautifully modelled here, complete with fencing. Um, I mean, this is lovely. This is probably one of the best VOR um, station models I've ever seen in the sim so far. It's beautifully modelled and coloured. Um, the interesting thing is there are actually two of these. There's one nearer to the central area and looking at the charts that's not shown. So this one is with a frequency of 111.05 um, but the other one which is modelled in the sim uh, but not shown on the charts we'll have a look at it as, as we go on. And what we'll do is we'll start from here and we'll move along over the military area and do a land side tour and then come back air side and then look a bit more closely. So there's the VOR station and as you can see the fence line itself looks really impressive. And the terrain has been nicely done. Interesting there we can see what looks like either Osobo's default approach lighting. This all looks to have been moved so um, it's interesting to see whether M&M um, &M simulations have actually moved the airport into what they consider to be the correct position. So we're coming up on the extension to the military area. On the right there you can see the runway extension was completed. And here you've got the military area with various vehicles. All nicely done, very nicely done I have to say. And then in front of us there you can see a couple of the watchtowers. Bear in mind this used to be a military base occupied by the Russians. And here coming up to Apron N, there you've got a couple of Black Hawk helicopters. The hangars are there, really, really nice. No internal modelling, unfortunately. Here we've got further helicopter landing. And I'll just take you across that beautiful military hangar there. 
Here you can see the landside road has been nicely modelled. Here's one of these watchtowers. You've got flags as well. well. The detail here is really amazing. They've done a lovely job and the terraforming just looks the part. So it's a lovely location and you can also see they've got um, street lamps. We'll have a look at what it looks like shortly in a minute in, in the darkness. Now coming up on the main terminal area in the car park here. Again, nicely modelled, really lovely modelling here. And they've not left the um, landside bit to photo scenery, which I'm really pleased about. So here you can see the landside part of the terminal and you can see in through the terminal. We will look at the inside later. But it's beautifully modelled. Everything is just really nicely done, even right down to the weathering on that entrance there. Signage, there's that um, sculpture that's an icon part of this airport. Everything down at Burger King, look the outside restaurant, taxis. This, this is just beautifully modelled. So there's the departures entrance on the left and the building is well weathered. Um, looks like it's been around a long time. Iconic structure there. Signs on near the car park and signs on the road there, the main road out to the right hand side. It's um, beautifully done. The fauna looks good as well. Trees and everything put in the right places. It's really nicely done. The control tower is nicely modelled with internal modelling, so we'll look at that shortly. And you've got all this beautiful detailed landside. Okay, a little anomaly there with the truck going into the grass, but that's not really a problem. Um, no internal modelling in these buildings, but externally they look excellent. As you can see, they look pretty fantastic. Here's the airside road. And you've got more buildings here. Got the old watchtower over there to the far right on the airside. Here we're coming up to the snow base. And again, all beautifully detailed and modelled. Nothing left of photo scenery. Looks great. Now this building here is the Best Western Hotel, which is on the airport. Again, no internal modelling, but it's been placed in the scenery of exactly the right spot, so that's really, really good. Complete with cars and a car park. It looks really nice. Love the animated flags, just looking the other way. Um, just looks lovely, very, very nice. So just a static shot there of the hotel, just showing you the detail, looks, it looks great. And there you can see the inside um, has been partially done. You've got this seating area just outside the hotel. It's, it's very, very nice that they've, they've gone this far, very, very impressive. There's another shot there showing you the signage on the building. Nice little restaurant attached to the hotel. It's very, very nice. So we continue the tour. This is the farthest um, northern part of the airport here. We still have signage. As you can see from this um, view here, the fence line goes right out towards the end of the perimeter of the airfield, which is really impressive. Rotating radar there looks really good. There you've got an ATR 42 or 72, never quite sure which ones they are. Sitting there on the left, nicely modelled. So this is Apron D. Again, there's a nice bunch of animated flags there. Um, and um, FPB buildings there, very, very nice. Ground markings on the, on the concrete look good, and the concrete itself, I have to say, looks quite impressive. There's the old watchtower that used to be in use there. As we come further south, I mean, the, 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 the whole terrain looks great. Here's the fire station. A couple of generic models by the looks of it in there, but um, again, a beautifully weathered building. 
So we go towards the control tower now. So there from the outside you can see it's internally modelled and it does look very nice. And here's a quick look inside, you can see we've got a lovely lady controller over there who's obviously about to go to work. And just another view looking airside through the um, control tower there, beautiful. Um, be nice to see what this looks like at night. So continuing the land side to the air side tour, here we go, we're coming up towards the terminal now. So just trying to get the speed right. What I like about this is not only the attention to detail on the road system, but if you look at these passenger entrances, they've even done the signage right down on the passenger entrances, which is amazing. As I said, we'll look inside the terminal in a, in a little while. Lots of clutter here, vehicles. There again on the right, look, you can see bits and pieces inside the terminal. And uh, the, the fact they've included the signage, I think, is brilliant. More airfield clutter there on the right side. Got a couple of vehicles now coming down the road towards us. But the, the building itself and the, um, the link bridges are really nicely weathered, beautifully modelled. Now here's the other VOR station, which is not shown on the chart, and to be honest I don't think it works. Maybe it was here originally before the airport was expanded. Perhaps somebody who, can, who looks at the video can tell me in the comments whether that's the case. So here's a quick tour of the airside ramp. From above, there's my aircraft parked on stand 202. Ground markings, as you can see, are wonderful, beautifully done. I'm not sure if that Virgin Atlantic is a model in the scenery or whether it was because I recently installed the FSLTL um, for online VATS in flying. I haven't really used it yet, so I don't know if it maybe it places models in sceneries. But as you can see, airside looks great. Let's get down and have a look at some signage on the ramp here. As you can see, it looks great. The signage looks good. You've even got those um, water drainage points too. And we go into the grass. And again, you've got these drain covers. Not sure, entirely sure what they are. So here's one of the runway exit signs, um, exit taxiways rather. Let's just have a look from the other side. All the ground markings are excellent. And again, you can see there um, entry signs to the runway, Romeo 01. Um, so it all looks pretty good. So looking down the other end there, this is runway 35. Um, you can see the slope in the runway, so that even the slope has been modelled. Something you must be aware of when you're coming into land here, especially if you come in on the 35 runway. Now just a quick look there at one of the door, one or two of the drainage ditches. You've got this one here, and this one over here. And again, the, uh, the ramp area is nicely modelled with the right amount of dirt and bits and pieces. This all looks pretty true to life. Okay, so let's get a close-up of the terminal and start to go inside. So before we do, here's, a, here's um, a, a look at the terminal stand during the daytime from the inside of the cockpit. This is what you'll see when you pull up to one of the stands. And um, as you can see, it's a pretty realistic view. You're looking at the, the jetway here. You can see the weathering and the um, sort of damage to it here over the years. The modelling is really beautiful. It's, it's well done, very well done. And another quick look at the first officer's side. So before we go inside, here's a quick look at the terminal from the stand. And I wanted to show you this, just to show you the detail. Here, the rusting um, on this here uh, and here looks really good. Um, this airport stands are equipped with VDGS, the Visual Guidance Docking System. Um, I'm not sure if this works. It's actually not mentioned in the features list. So if you have the BGGS module installed, maybe it might win, maybe it's worth trying. I'm certainly going to fly in here, so at some point we will, we will test it. But just a really nice view here showing you the terminal and you can see inside the bits and pieces going on. And again, I really love these entry signs, properly lit, nicely modelled, 
above the doorways in almost every case which really brings this terminal to life. Can't wait to see it in the darkness hours and um, we'll have a look at that in a minute. So let's go inside on the ground floor first. So a little bit of juddering, but then I am going quite slow. So the arrivals entrance again, look at that beautiful modeling, just beautiful. So we go in through the doorway and let's see how far this goes. So you goes up there, but I don't think you can go through that. But there we are looking out through the windows to airside a lovely view that looks pretty realistic nice lighting above us on the ceiling you've got even got wheelchairs to the right which is a nice touch and a close-up look at the signage it's bright the colors are just as they should be and it doesn't blur when you're up close which is great and some nice advertising hoardings there So while we're on the, on the ground floor, here outside you can see the um, cargo bins, a couple of tugs, an engineer there, other bits and pieces. Right, here we are again, another arrivals entrance. This time we've got modelling inside and people. Let's pop inside. That's really nice, very nice models, crisp and clear. It all looks really good. And it looks like you can go around to the other side as well. There's the airline flight attendant's desk where you would um, hand in your tickets and be allowed to go out if you were going onto the bus. Sometimes people they use buses to bus people out to the aircraft rather than jetways. But uh, yeah, this 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 looks very very pleasant, very nice indeed. So let's continue the ground level tour, going past the outside of the terminal. Again, more um, airfield clutter, baggage dollies and trolleys. It's really, really nice. So there's another one there with people inside. Let's pop in. Again, nicely modeled, signage, people. And there's a nice shot of the inside. I mean, everything is crystal clear and it looks very, very realistic. These signs look really good. They're crisp and clear, even up close, as is the advertising hoarding here. And again, you've got these stairwells really detailed. This is a second scenery where I've looked at escalators, where the escalators themselves, although they're not animated, they're detailed enough to look like the real thing, just as you would see in a real airport. Modeling is excellent in this, this scenery. And again, you've got this nice little view here of passengers sitting, waiting. Wheelchairs in the corner. Very, very nice. And there's a quick view looking in the other direction where you can see out of the windows to the rest of the terminal. So let's go up the stairs to the next level, but inside the terminal and see, what, see whether this works. As you can see, beautiful stairs. Okay, so that doesn't go up to anything per se. So we'll pop outside the building and have a look at the next level from the and enter from the outside. Okay, so we're outside again. Uh, oh wow, look at this. Look, moving security cameras. This has got to be a first. I've not seen that in the scenery. Absolutely beautiful. Really impressed with that. But as you can see, we're outside and we're looking at the second level here. So let's pop inside, but before we do, let's have a close look at this camera. That is amazing, an animated security camera, complete with red light. <laughs> That's very impressive, I love it. So here we are inside the, the second level airside, lots of signage and hoardings, not much else to see unfortunately. There is a bit further up, we'll have a look in a minute. But um, just before we go up there, another animated security camera. <laughs> I'm impressed, I do like it, it's a lovely feature. So a little slow pan up this airside area, again signage really crisp and clear as is, as is the hoardings. Nice view outside the windows, 
I mean this looks very very impressive it's nicely done top notch the flooring the walls on the left there complete with the doors entry doors into what I would assume would be um, electrical areas and stuff like that the hoardings are really good these advertising hoardings are varied they're in the right language too and I want to just turn around and have a look at the other side yes um, again, they're the correct way round. Sometimes, you, and a couple of seniors I've looked at, um, you look at um, a hoarding or advertising hoarding and it's the same on the other side, but it's been reversed. So it's not been properly orientated. Again, more beautiful signage, accurate. And again, we've got the, the cameras. Um, I'm getting a bit um, crazy about this, but look at those um, um, security cameras are brilliant. I love it, I really love it. Very, very unusual, very impressive. We'll go down those stairs in a minute and have a look. I just want to track along here. Male and female toilets. It looks nice. It looks the inside of the terminal is done beautifully. Very, very nice indeed. So we get to the end bit here. Now this is nice. There's an entrance to the jetway, fully modelled, with lighting and signage at the end. And they've even managed to put a little wheelchair there. Let's have a quick tour down here before we go into the um, terminal proper. So through the entrance doors. Now this is the view that you would see as you are walking down the jetway here or the entrance to the main jetway again beautiful to have this signage right up there it's really impressive so we go through the doors here or what would be the doors and here you can see out onto the ramp there's the entrance to the jetway proper and there's um, stairways down to the ramp which would be used by flight crew, um, dispatchers and the like. And I believe this is the separate entrance for arrivals because by law, under European law, I think it's EC300 is the appropriate law. Um, arrivals and departures need to be separated, they can't mix for security reasons. So this all looks great, modelling's fantastic. Let's get back in the terminal. And we'll just pause at the top. Here. So loads of security cameras there <laughs> above the airline desks. They're all over the place. I think they've taken over the airport. <laughs> but it looks great. Now here's the arrivals hall. Obviously there you can see the baggage carousels. Got a couple of people there. Um, everything nicely modelled. There's a um, duty free there as well. And you've, they've even got an attendant there which is impressive. Just a quick look inside the shop there. It looks great. Lovely lady sitting there waiting to serve her customers. There's your passengers on waiting on the baggage carousels for their baggage to come up. Um, rent a car desks over there in the corner, but uh, are not fully developed to know people as such. But uh, no, it's fine. I, I've got no complaints. This is the whole thing's beautifully modelled. And passport control. So let's go back to the airside area and have a look at the next down link of the stairway and see what it is. You could have real fun really going, just touring around here, it looks fantastic. So back outside. And let's go up to the higher level. So here we are entering the upper level of the airside part of the terminal. Again, we've got great um, advertising hoardings, beautifully done, very crisp and clear. Lots of good signage. Our old friend, the security cameras, having a good go there as well. One of the entry gates, this 203, which is a stand next door to mine one. Little bit of blurring on the sign here, but the rest of it, look, is absolutely crisp and clear. Even got the old computer down there on the airline desk. 
And looking down here, let's have a slow pan down here. The signs look good. Very, very nice indeed as we pass down here. I'm just going to stop at this cafe and turn round. And there we go, just checking that the signs are look the same as, the, as you turn round and they're not reversed. A scenery recently I looked at, they had these hanging signs and these were basically the, facing the wrong way, they were turned around. Nicely modelled little cafe here. Uh, would have been nice to have an attendant here. They put one in the duty free shop but decided not to put one in here. Which is a pity, um, but there you go. It's great, it's, it's lovely. The ceiling looks wonderful. Again, you've got weathering. The whole thing looks like it's been, you know, been around for a while. And you've got the down lights. The lighting looks great. Okay, slow tour up here just to have a look at the passengers and the bits and pieces. To the left there, you've got Duty Pre Shop that looks like it's fully modelled. Um, the signage, seats, passengers. Uh, it looks lovely. It looks wonderful, doesn't it? It looks really impressive. And as we get closer up here, more duty free, another little cafe, and I believe we've got a restaurant here on the left. But again, the passengers, um, the figures look great. I mean, this is great. Look, you even got some um, air conditioning fans. Little coffee house here. And as I get up close, everything looks really good. See this? little um, facade here has been done at such a high resolution that it looks real it looks it, it's very very acceptable and there we are looking the other direction you've got the little seating area duty free on the left there and there's the duty free you can even see a woman in there which is great interesting that they didn't have an attendant um, on the other side but that looks great let's just do a little tour in here I mean, this is beautifully modelled. Look at it. And to have um, a customer there as well. I mean, look at the um, look at the modelling. This is all great. Oh, look at the size of those Toblerones. I wouldn't mind one of those. I think I'm going to have certainly have to visit Pristina. And there we are, looking at the other the other direction. There's a pizzeria. You've got um, vending machines as well. And what a lovely scene there behind this little seating area restaurant. Beautiful. So let's just come out of the duty-free shop here. You've got what looks like airline check-in desks. Let's just go through. Um, nicely modeled, little computers on the desktop there. Uh, customer agent talking to a couple of people. This is a security area, which is really, really nicely modeled, I have to say. I spent nearly 40 years working in airport security, both inside terminals and airside in vehicles, so I know this situation well. And that looks very, very nicely modeled. So this is passport control, that um, obviously you come out of landside having checked in, go up to the security, up to passport control, and then finally into the airside departure lounge, where you go to get your flight. And again, we've got our animated cameras, it's a nice touch, I have to say. It's a really nice touch. Quick look back at the security area into airside. I mean, this is wonderful. This is probably one of the... It's close to one of the top interiors I've seen modelled. There's the little outside seating area that we saw a moment ago. And we've got another little coffee shop. So I'm just going to stop here, pause at the, at the top of the escalator here so you can see this little seat area has got a guy sit there. A lovely view out through the windows there, really crisp, clear glass. Again, I'm really bowled over by the, the ceiling of the roofing architecture. It's really good. So let's pop downstairs. And this is really nice to see. Very nice indeed. Entrance on the left. Let's just pause here. So a couple of quick shots inside the landside check-in area here. I don't think I've seen a passenger model with a child 
So this is new um, and quite impressive. And then looking in the other direction, uh, lots of passenger queues going up to the check-in desks and probably for the first time, I don't see this very often, we've got check-in agents manning the desks. Um, and this, okay, so I'm going to, you're going to say right off, as a pilot, you're not going to see any of this. But this just shows you what this simulator is capable of. When you get a decent modeler, um, company of development, um, company that knows what they're doing, and takes the time and makes the effort, this is what you get. It looks, you know, it just brings it to life. It's amazing. Never seen mobile security cameras before until I viewed this scenery. Really impressed with it. Some very nice models of passengers. Up close, they're still pretty, really nice. There's no blurring or um, sort of um, deformation of the image as such. So here we are, just an example of how nice these models look. We're really close up to these ladies. There's no blurring at all. Um, the shapes and the models um, and the visual visuality of this um, of these two ladies looks really good, even up close. And here on the right, as I've said, you can see this lady got a pet with um, a youngster there, which I don't think I've not seen before. And here's a close look at the check-in desk. Hats off to these guys for getting the guys, the check-in agents here. And not only that, they've got the right uniforms. So he's got an orange tie. This is an EasyJet check-in. Here you've got Turkish Airlines, where the lady is dressed slightly differently. As we go along the bottom, the end of it here. Okay, that lady's been repeated from the duty-free, but I'm not complaining. Um, it looks great. Just going to come out a bit and show you this check-in a bit more. Really, really nice. And there's even upstairs offices. Look at that. So they've modelled the offices above the check-in area there. There's a view in the other direction. And just finally, a look across the rest of the concourse. Again, you can see people queuing up to check in, the different desks. Um, all the sign boards look great. They're nicely modeled, they're crisp and clear. Departures board over there, yet another little shop. And here you've got Burger King. <laughs> I love my burgers, doesn't everybody? So finally, let's pop out land side from the terminal and have a look. Actually, before we do that, just one more shot here showing this additional shop. There's just so much detail inside this building, it's wonderful. So now let's pop out outside. Very nice. There you can see another little seating area outside. This is the landside area we looked at before. There's the taxis. We've got this iconic little structure that's at the airport. And you've got a couple of people there still taking photographs. And there we are looking at the landside approach into the building again. Modeling is beautiful. Everything right down to the roof structure. The cars are really good as well. Those cabbies, taxis there look really good. And looking in the other direction, oh, they've got KFC as well. I think I'm going to have to come to this airport, definitely. They've got Burger King and KFC. They've got two of the three places I love to visit with my son. <laughs> it's a lovely airport, beautifully modelled. There's the sign on the building, and even on top of the roof, look. Everything looks really impressive. Okay, so there you go, we've done the grand tour and had a look, really long look at everything, particularly inside the terminal. One of the most nicest and beautifully modelled terminal interiors I've seen so far, with lots of new features, particularly the um, security cameras. Okay, so now let's turn the lighting down to dusk and have a look at the lighting on this, and I'm expecting big things. Okay, thanks to Sobo's um, time slider, it's really difficult to get just the right time where the lights just come on. But anyway, this is 5pm local time, and it's dusk. As you can see, we're looking at the terminal and the car park land side. 
Um, quite a surprise to see the yellow tungsten lighting, but many airports do have this. As you can see airside, you've got the standard LED type lighting, um, which lights up the parking areas, but here landside they've got the tungsten lighting, which produces this yellow effect. And again, this is available, this is at many airports. But um, beautifully done there, you can see um, parts of the inside of the terminal, how it looks and the landside signs, everything all nicely lit up there. And looking in the other direction, there you've got the threshold of uh, runway 35, here's the military area, there's some lighting there, and of course here the landside road, all lit up, all of these overhead lights work and they produce the light all the way down here, which I'm really quite impressed with. So let's go to the airside ramp at dusk and have a look at what it looks like for you the pilot. So firstly, a view from inside the flight deck, this is what um, this is the view that's going to meet you when you park up on stand 202 at dusk. This is what you're going to look at inside the flight deck. View through the captain's window. And there's a view across looking through the first officer's window. It's really, really nice. Very realistic. So here's the main stand itself, stand 202. There's my aircraft parked next to this Virgin Atlantic. Um, 787 and looking at the terminal you can see the lighting inside is is beautiful it's excellent so much so that it looks really good from the outside again these little signs that are all over the place are lit and they remain lit in the darkness hours which i'm impressed with um, not a single asobo globe in sight which is really impressive these lights are producing the down light in exactly the right place and um this modelling never ceases to amaze me. Look, they've even got the um, satellite dishes on the top here. <laughs> it's just Im it's so impressive. And just looking at the other end there, I mean, this is, is great. You're not going to have any problems parking up here. And the view, um, it's, just, it's, it's lovely. If you manage to land at this time, you're going to have a really, really nice view. The airport sign's really nicely lit there. And the whole airport sits in a beautiful location. So there's an interesting little view. You've got the landside car park on the lower right there with the building. Up in the far left is the threshold of runway 35 and it's whole thing surrounded by mountains and this beautiful sunset sky. And here look, you've even got stars showing above. This is, is lovely. Military area over there in the distance too. So now we're looking towards the threshold of runway 17 in the distance. Here's a good example of the ramp signage and markings. Green center line taxiway lights, so you've got no problem coming in here. Blue airfield boundary lights, um, are all in the right places. Lit signage, everything is nicely presented here. Really impressive. So the control tower looks a bit dark from the outside, but let's pop inside. So that looks a bit better. There is lighting inside, it's quite subtle. Uh, it's not been overdone, but it's actually what you would expect inside um, an air traffic control tower because you don't want it too bright because you've got screens that you've got to look at and you've got to adjust to the lighting. So that looks really quite good. Beautiful views out the window and our young lady there is about to go to work. So an overview of some of the buildings there. Signage, I mean the lighting looks great. Taxiway signage as you can see all looks good there, no problems with that at all. And there's the fire station, um, just subtly lit, not too much. Um, just you can still see the models which is good so there you go some nice subtle lighting on the hotel nothing fancy they've not um, lit the internal no parallax views but I can deal with that it's no problem and a view of, from of the hotel from another angle showing the signage and the car parks it looks fine it looks absolutely fine okay very quick run down the landside road here to look at the lighting um, as we approach the terminal landside at dusk. So again you can see the modeling is lovely, the lighting is really nice and subtle. This tungsten lighting really does quite work, it does really does work. So I just drop down a bit here, as you can see lighting on the terminal looks really good slow down a bit here so 
So there you go, and you can see inside, lighting inside the terminal looks good. Um, I don't want this to be <laughs> another hugely long video, so I'm not going to go and look in detail. Um, you can see there, just looking at the windows as we pass, just how good the subtle lighting is inside. So there we are, we've had a look at dusk. Let's quickly take it down to night and have a look at the night effect and see how much it comes up. Okay, so just after 9 p.m. local time here, and as you can see, it's well darkness now. Um, and the whole terminal lighting has come up slightly more, um, which is good. What I just want to do now is get down close to the airside ramp and have a look and hopefully see the lighting and hopefully it's not been overdone. A lot of sceneries tend to turn up the lighting too far when it gets night time. But uh, let's, let's have a look. Okay, so here's the airside ramp where you would park up at night. There's my aircraft in the darkness. Um, the first thing to say right off the bat is coming off the taxiway there, you've got green centerline lights, um, well-lit taxiway signage, blue airfield edge lights, so you're not going to have any problem leaving the runway and taxiing to this area. And again, the green lead-in lights to lead into each of the stands. The stands are adequately lit, it's not been overdone, so I'm really impressed with that. And again, looking at the terminal, seeing through the windows, the lighting is exactly the same as it was during the dusk hours, so they've not turned that up, so it's not been overdone, so I'm really impressed with that. So a quick look at the military area at the southern end, it's aprons N and L, um, just so that we can have a look. As you can see, plenty of parking for you helicopter pilots and military guys. Um, here you've got helicopter ramps here, got these lovely hangars, no work inside the hangars have been done unfortunately, but outside they look excellent. And this is the whole area that actually doesn't appear on the charts, but was part of the um, upgrade to the airport at some point um, in, in recent years. And here you can see taxiways, everything's beautifully lit. And there's a look in the other direction, just giving you a general overview of what it looks like at night. I mean, it's impressive, it's very impressive. Okay, 6 a.m. local time, it's dawn, the sun's well up now, just coming up quite nicely. And as you can see, a beautiful effect on the airport itself. It, the whole place lies in a beautiful um, location again. Time to wrap up the review and give you my thoughts. First and foremost, um, I have to say this is a wonderful airport. Um, they've modelled an awful lot for the install size. Okay, four and a half gigs. I've seen airports of seven to eight gigs where the modelling hasn't been as extensive as this. So download at 1.7 gigs is more than manageable for most people. 4.5 gigs is quite a small installation for an airport as detailed as this. Really impressive. Um, lots of things I like about this. The fence line goes all the way around the airport perimeter. The airport's modelled beautifully into the surrounding terrain. It blends really, really nice. They've done a great job terraforming. Um, the detail is stunning. Inside the terminal, some of the best I've ever seen. Um, it's right up there with the likes of Fly Tampa and Pyro Dev Company. Um, possibly even exceeds it. Never seen animated security cameras before, which is really impressive. And as we've seen, the people models are really, really top-notch. Even when you go up close, there's no blurring or um, problems at all. And there's even some new models there. I've not seen... Um, a mother and, and a child standing there until I looked at this scenery. All the signage is excellent and really high quality. Even the little insignificant signs inside the terminals are crisp and clear, even right up close. Advertising hoardings are great, some of the best I've seen as well. Um, the airport typically shows them its military heritage as well. You've got these little watchtowers um, adequately spaced down the landside area. Um, this copes well for you military pilots who like to fly helicopters or military jets in here. There's plenty for you to do here. Um, and you're equipped for low visibility because the ILS is Category 3B certified. Um, and again, nice to see that there are no vehicles entering the runway. I uh, really can't find anything to complain about here. Um, if they are, they're just nitpicks. They've, um, For example, they've modelled a person in the duty-free shop. Um, <coughs> but um, some of the check-in desks and um, the um, rental car desks are modelled but no people. But that's probably the only nitpick I can find. 
there um really isn't anything else to to to, to say that the dusk and night lighting is excellent okay maybe there could be a little bit more night lighting on places like the control tower from the outside and the fire station i mean those these are two critical places that need to be well lit um in the darkness hours the inside of the control tower is perfectly acceptable nice to see somebody stood there as well it's not empty i'm impressed with that um and they've gone to town here right the way through the airport it's um very very impressive gonna have to do a video gonna have to fly in here um it's just really really good do i think it's worth the price 18 pounds 61 pence uk for me from the orbix website when converted from dollars and that includes vat and tax it's a steal <laughs> it's a steal um this um scenery is probably worth 22 23 quid um at the moment the conversions um from you australian dollars for those of you in europe 20 on euros and 18 cents including tax again converted from australian dollars that's a really good price for such an extensive product and the modeling and the time taken to do this um it's probably nearer 25 euros it's it's, it's, it's a lovely product but um no really happy with the price i think it's a steal and I think the um, airport here is probably one of the best I've seen. It's right up there with the top ones. Um, and uh, no hesitation in recommending you to get hold of it. It's been around for a while, has a long history. And now you've got this place to fly into and I can't wait. So thanks for joining me. This is Lee, your virtual airline pilot, wrapping up another review. Kosovo. Pristina Adem Yasari International Airport in Kosovo, Bravo, Kilo, Papa, Romeo. It's a payware scenery by M&M Simulations, version 1.1 for the PC version of Flight Simulator. Downloads at 1.7 gig, installs at 4.5 gig. Prices, the Orbix prices, €21.18, which equates to $20.63 or 18 pounds and 61 pence uk all of those prices have been converted from australian dollars and they include tax and vat which of course may vary depending on the country you're in when you make your purchase slightly cheaper from the orbix website but really there's not much in it a whole host of features that make this an airport a really top-notch buy um, can't recommend it highly enough if you've still got money in your pockets go and get it so thanks again um, one more video to come this week, hopefully, where we're going to be doing our Any Wheel, Any Builds session, where we're going to take the helicopter from Hooper's Airport, home of the Los Angeles Airport Police Division in Los Angeles, and we're going to fly down to the new Any Builds KLAX International Airport, and then from there we're going to head down to, KL, to, to Venice Beach, which is another scenery from Any Builds, which is free for now. So head out to Sim Market or Innibuild's website if you want this Venice Beach scenery. It's free. It's nothing to pay for it. So we're going to check out these three sceneries and have a, a little adventure flight in a helicopter. Thanks again. Thanks for joining me. Hope you've enjoyed the video and I will see you at the next one. Guys, have a great week and a nice weekend of flying coming up. Take care. Bye-bye for now.